Captain Michael Roberts stared defiantly at the sea of alien faces as the Iridian guards dragged him before the intergalactic tribunal in chains, ready to shock the audience with his brutal confession of humanity's darkest deeds. The vast chamber echoed with clicks, hisses and growls as dozens of extraterrestrial species studied the battle-scarred human commander. He returned their scrutiny with an unflinching gaze, his icy blue eyes boring into the gathered delegates. High Councillor Sagan, a willowy Iridian with large black eyes, called the tribunal to order with a clack of his gavel. His melodic voice rang out, declaring the grave charges against Roberts. The systematic slaughter of Iridian civilians, deployment of forbidden weapons, unspeakable acts of torture against prisoners. The evidence seemed ironclad, from damning video logs to tearful witness testimony painting Roberts as a monster in human skin. Roberts stood silently through the deluge of accusations, his face an impassive mask. When Sagan finally prompted him to speak in his defense, the human captain did the unthinkable. I did it. All of it, Roberts stated bluntly. Gasps and cries of outrage erupted across the chamber. Sagan had to bang his gavel repeatedly to restore a semblance of order. Roberts proceeded to lay out his crimes in grisly detail, with cold clinical precision. He described Iridian cities bombed into oblivion, captives gunned down after surrendering, bioweapons unleashed on defenseless populations. The humans' frank admissions painted a blood-soaked picture of carnage and sent shudders through even the most hardened alien diplomats. But Roberts was far from finished. As he continued his shocking confession, he revealed the sinister truth that drove him to commit such atrocities. The Iridians, he claimed, were the true face of evil. For years, they had wormed their way into human colonies, planting mind-controlling parasites and brainwashed sleeper agents, to rot the foundations of human civilization from within. Roberts had uncovered incontrovertible proof of this insidious plot to subjugate humanity. But when he brought his evidence before Earth's government, his urgent warnings fell on deaf ears, dismissed as paranoid delusions. Abandoned by his superiors, Roberts saw no choice but to act alone. He gathered the few soldiers still loyal to him and launched a brutal shadow war against the Iridians, turning their own underhanded tactics against them. His unsanctioned mission was one born of grim necessity, to rip away the Iridians' facade and expose their malevolent agenda for all humanity to see. And Roberts had succeeded, at a terrible cost in blood. Murmurs of unease spread through the tribunal as Roberts' words sank in. The once straightforward narrative of a rogue human captain's war crimes began to unravel. Some delegates openly questioned if their own people had fallen victim to Iridian manipulation as well. Heated arguments erupted between the Iridian representatives and their accusers. The mood in the chamber turned ugly. In his confession, Roberts had masterfully cast doubt on the true villain in this conflict. The intergalactic community was fracturing before him, old alliances crumbling, festering suspicions bubbling to the surface. The ensuing trial would be a flashpoint its outcome holding grave consequences not only for Roberts, but the future of galactic relations. No matter what happened next, the wily human captain had already scored a victory, forcing the tribunal to confront the grim reality that nothing was as it seemed. Humanity's fate, and that of the galaxy itself, would soon be forever altered. As the tribunal erupted into a cacophony of shouts and accusations, Sagan slammed his gavel down repeatedly, his usually serene face twisted with rage and confusion. Order! There will be order in this chamber, he bellowed. The clamor died down to a tense murmur as all eyes turned to the High Counselor. Sagan fixed Roberts with a piercing stare, his black eyes gleaming. Captain Roberts, the claims you have made are extraordinary, Sagan said, choosing his words carefully. But this tribunal deals in facts, not wild conjecture. If you expect us to even consider your allegations, you must provide concrete evidence. Do you have any to offer? Roberts turned to his defense counsel and gave a curt nod. Colonel John Hawkins, a grizzled veteran with a face like weathered granite, stepped forward and held up a small data drive. Esteemed members of the tribunal, Hawkins said, his gravelly voice carrying through the chamber, 
What I hold in my hand is irrefutable proof of the Iridian's treachery. This drive contains encrypted files and classified intelligence reports that corroborate every word of Captain Roberts' testimony. Hawkins strode forward and placed the drive on the podium before Sagan. The High Counselor picked it up gingerly, as if it might explode in his grasp. As the representatives filed out, Roberts was led away by a phalanx of guards, their weapons trained on him. They marched him through the twisting corridors of the tribunal complex, past curious onlookers and whispering diplomats. Finally, they reached the holding cells buried deep within the bowels of the facility. The guards shoved Roberts roughly into a cramped, dimly lit room and locked the door behind him with a resounding clang. Roberts sat on the narrow cot, his head in his hands. He had played his hand, laid his cards on the table for all to see. Now he could only wait and hope that the evidence would be enough to convince the tribunal of the truth. Suddenly the cell door hissed open. Roberts leapt to his feet, expecting to see the guards returning to drag him back to the chamber. Instead, a cloaked figure slipped inside, the door sliding shut behind them. The figure reached up and lowered their hood, revealing a regal Iridian face. I am Zala, the Iridian said, his voice low and urgent. And I am here to help you, Captain Roberts. Roberts scoffed. Help me? Your kind has done nothing but lie and manipulate. Why should I trust you? Zala stepped closer, his eyes intense. Because I am part of a faction within the Iridian government that has long opposed the infiltration of human space, we knew it was wrong, that it would only lead to ruin for both our peoples. Robert studied Zalar warily. Could this be another trick, another layer to the Iridian's deception? But something in the Iridian's face, in the earnest tone of his voice, made Robert's pause. What do you want from me? Roberts asked, his voice guarded. For your cooperation, Zalar replied. Help me expose the full extent of the Iridian plot and I will work to secure your release and grant you asylum. Together, we can bring the true culprits to justice and prevent further bloodshed. Roberts hesitated, his mind racing. It was a tempting offer, a chance to uncover the whole sordid truth and clear his name. But could he trust this Iridian stranger? I'll do it. Robert said at last, his expression resolute. But I have one condition. My soldiers, the ones who fought beside me against the Iridians, they get immunity and protection too. Zala nodded solemnly. You have my word, Captain. Your loyal comrades will be safe. The Iridian glanced over his shoulder at the cell door. I must go before I am missed, but I will be in touch. Stay strong, Captain Roberts. The truth will out. With that... Zalar slipped out of the cell as quietly as he had come, leaving Roberts alone with his thoughts and the weight of the task ahead. In the tribunal chamber, Sagan and the other representatives pored over the files from the data drive, their faces growing more ashen with each passing minute. The evidence was damning, painting a picture of a vast Iridian conspiracy that had wormed its way into the heart of human civilization. Surveillance photos showed Iridian operatives meeting with brainwashed human collaborators. Schematics detailed the workings of insidious mind-control devices planted in human colonies. Intercepted communications revealed Iridian agents discussing their plans for the systematic takeover of key human institutions, from governments to militaries to corporations. It was all there laid out in black and white. The Iridian's treachery was undeniable. Sagan called the tribunal back into session, his face grave. As the representatives took their seats, the High Counselor held up the data drive. Esteemed colleagues, Sagan began, his voice heavy. The evidence presented to us by the human delegation is troubling, to say the least. It appears that the Iridians have been engaging in a widespread campaign of infiltration and subversion against our human allies. Shocked murmurs rippled through the chamber. Some of the representatives, particularly those from species with close ties to the Iridians, shook their heads in disbelief. This is preposterous, the Zoraxian delegate shouted, pounding his fist on the table. The humans have fabricated this so-called evidence to justify their own aggression. Hawkins shot to his feet, 
his face red with anger. You dare accuse us of deceit. The proof is right there in front of you. The Iridians have been playing us all for fools, manipulating us to further their own agenda. The chamber descended into a din of shouting and recriminations. Accusations flew back and forth as old alliances began to strain under the weight of the revelations. Sagan called for order once again, his voice booming over the tumult. Enough. We must have all the facts before we pass judgment. He turned to the guard stationed at the chamber doors. Bring in Captain Roberts. I believe we have further questions for him. Roberts was escorted back into the tribunal chamber under heavy guard. He walked with his head held high, ignoring the hostile glares and whispered imprecations from some of the representatives. As he took the stand, Sagan leaned forward, his gaze intent. Captain Roberts, in light of this new evidence, we must ask you to provide more details about the extent of the Iridian infiltration. Names, locations, anything you can give us to help unravel this conspiracy. Roberts glanced at Zalar, who gave a subtle nod. Taking a deep breath, the human captain began to speak, his voice calm and measured. For years the Iridians have been planting sleeper agents in human colonies, Roberts said. High-ranking officials, military officers, even civilians. They've been using advanced mind-control technology to turn our own people against us. As Roberts spoke, the chamber grew deathly silent. The representatives listened in growing horror as the true scope of the Iridians' crimes was laid bare. When Roberts finished, Sagan sat back in his chair, his face ashen. This is deeply disturbing, he said, his voice shaking slightly. If what Captain Roberts says is true, then the Iridians have perpetrated a monstrous betrayal against not only humanity, but the entire intergalactic community. Whispers of agreement echoed through the chamber. Some of the representatives who had once been staunch Iridian allies now looked uneasy, doubt creeping into their eyes. We must take action, the Krellian delegate declared, rising to her feet. The Iridians must answer for their crimes. We cannot allow such treachery to go unpunished. Other voices joined hers, calling for sanctions, for a full investigation, for justice. The once united front against humanity was crumbling, the cracks in the intergalactic alliance widening with each passing moment. In the midst of the growing chaos, Roberts caught Zalar's eye. The Iridian gave a small, grim smile. They both knew that this was only the beginning, that the road ahead would be long and bloody. But for the first time since the war began, Roberts felt a flicker of hope. The truth was out there now, and humanity would no longer have to fight in the shadows. The stage was set for a reckoning, and Roberts would see it through to the bitter end, no matter the consequences. The tribunal chamber fell silent as Zalar strode in, his footsteps echoing on the polished floor. Without a word, he approached Roberts and deactivated the energy cuffs binding the human captain's wrists. What is the meaning of this? Sagan demanded, rising from his seat. Zalar turned to face the tribunal. Captain Roberts is to be released immediately. His expertise is crucial in countering the Iridian threat. Sagan's face contorted with anger. This is outrageous. The tribunal must conclude properly. We cannot simply... We don't have time for your bureaucratic nonsense, Zalar cut him off. Every moment we waste here, the Iridians tighten their grip on the galaxy. We're going on a little field trip, Captain, Zalar replied. Time to show the galaxy the truth. Hours later, Roberts found himself aboard a stealth shuttle, surrounded by a handful of his most trusted soldiers. Zalar sat across from him, poring over a holographic map. Our target is here, Zalar said, pointing to a small moon, an Iridian black site housing one of their primary mind control facilities. Roberts leaned in, studying the layout. Security. Heavy, Zalar admitted, but nothing you can't handle, I'm told. The shuttle touched down silently on the moon's surface. Roberts led the team towards the facility, his boots crunching on the rocky ground. They moved swiftly, utilizing stealth tech to avoid detection. At the perimeter, Roberts held up a hand, signaling the team to halt. He pulled out a device, scanning for weak points in the base's defenses. Finding one, he nodded to his tech specialist. 
Jenkins, you're up. Jenkins stepped forward, fingers flying over his data pad. The facility's shields flickered momentarily, creating a gap just large enough for the team to slip through. Inside, Robert's stomach churned at the sight before him. Rows upon rows of stasis pods lined the walls, each containing a being from a different species. Their faces were contorted in silent screams. Roberts forced himself to focus. Fan out. Secure any data you can find. We need concrete proof of what's happening here. As the team worked, Roberts approached a central console. He inserted a data drive, downloading files that detailed the full scope of the Iridian's galactic infiltration. Suddenly alarms blared. Roberts spun around to see a squad of Iridian soldiers pouring into the room, led by a towering figure in ornate armor. Krelar! Zalar hissed. The Iridian leader's eyes narrowed. Traitors and vermin, you will not leave this place alive. Chaos erupted. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Roberts and his team took cover. They returned fire, dropping several Iridian soldiers, but more kept coming. Roberts gritted his teeth. He locked eyes with Krellar across the room. In that moment, he knew what he had to do. Cover me, he yelled, then sprinted towards Krellar. The Iridian leader sneered, raising his weapon, but Roberts was faster. He tackled Krellar to the ground, sending them both crashing into a bank of computers. They grappled fiercely, trading blows. Krellar was stronger, but Roberts was quicker. He ducked under a wild swing and drove his fist into Krellar's midsection. The fight seemed to last for hours. Robert's vision blurred, his body screaming in protest, but he refused to give up. With a final burst of strength, he locked Krellar in a chokehold. Yield, Roberts growled. Krellar struggled for a moment longer, then went limp. I surrender, he gasped. The fighting stopped. Iridian soldiers lowered their weapons, stunned by their leader's defeat. Robert staggered to his feet, every muscle aching. Secure the prisoner, he ordered, and get that data. We're taking it all back to the tribunal. Days later, Robert stood before the assembled representatives once more. But this time he wasn't a prisoner. He was a hero. As the evidence was presented, countless files, security footage, and Krellar's own testimony— the tribunal erupted into chaos. Species that had once been allies turned on each other, demanding explanations and retribution. Captain Roberts, he said, it seems we owe you an apology and our gratitude. Roberts nodded, but before he could speak, an aide burst into the chamber. Urgent news from the human colonies, the aide cried. The Iridians have launched a massive attack. They're trying to silence us. We need to act now, Robert said, or everything we've fought for will be lost. Sagan nodded grimly. I propose an immediate alliance, all our forces united against this Iridian threat. As the tribunal erupted into frantic discussion, Roberts clenched his fists. The real war was just beginning. The tribunal chamber erupted into frantic action as representatives rushed to mobilize their forces. Captain Roberts wasted no time striding out of the room with Zalar close behind. We need to move fast, Robert said, his voice tight with urgency. Every second counts. Zalar nodded grimly. I have loyal Iridians who will fight alongside us, but can your people truly trust us after everything that's happened? Their target, a massive Iridian shipyard orbiting a distant gas giant. Intelligence suggested Krellar was there, marshalling his forces for a final push, Robert stood before the assembled strike team, his face set with perseverance. This won't be easy, but what we do here today will determine the fate of billions. Are you with me? A chorus of affirmatives rang out, human voices mixing with the deeper tones of the Iridians. Roberts allowed himself a small smile. Maybe this crazy alliance could work after all. The assault on the shipyard was chaos from the start. Roberts's shuttle shuddered as it punched through the defensive screen, alarms blaring. The moment they touched down, plasma fire filled the air. All around him, the shipyard was a maelstrom of combat. Human and rebel Iridian forces pushed forward relentlessly, fighting for every inch of ground. 
the clanging of metal and the screams of the wounded created a hellish cacophony. Roberts fought his way through the sprawling facility, coordinating his troops via comlink. Alpha team, secure those production lines. Beta, I want control of the main reactor. Sweat poured down his face as he battled on, his muscles burning with exertion. But there was no time to rest, not with so much at stake. Finally, Roberts reached the command deck. The doors hissed open, revealing a familiar figure. The Iridian leader sneered. So the human lapdog comes to heal. What followed was a brutal, no-holds-barred fight. Roberts emptied his rifle, but Krellar was too fast, closing the distance in a blur of motion. The two crashed together, grappling fiercely. Krellar's strength was immense, his blows threatening to shatter bone. But Roberts was quicker, more agile. He ducked and weaved, using Krellar's momentum against him. Pain exploded across Roberts's ribs as a vicious kick connected. He stumbled, gasping for breath. Krellar pressed his advantage, lunging forward with a roar. But Roberts was ready. He sidestepped at the last moment, using Krellar's own weight to flip him onto his back. In an instant, Roberts was on him, pinning the Iridian leader down. Thanks over, Roberts panted, his fist raised. Surrender now! For a long moment, Krellar's eyes blazed with hatred. Then slowly the fight seemed to drain out of him. I yield, he spat. With Krellar subdued and the shipyard secure, Roberts allowed himself a moment of relief. But it was short-lived. A urgent transmission from Zalar cut through the post-battle haze. Roberts's blood ran cold. The fight, it seemed, was nowhere near the end. Roberts' eyes stung from the acrid smoke filling the bridge. His ship shuddered as another volley of Iridian fire impacted their shields. Through the viewscreen, he watched the remnants of the once mighty Iridian armada scatter like leaves in a storm. Sir, we've got multiple contacts fleeing the system, Lieutenant Chen reported, her fingers flying over her console. One of them matches the signature of High Councillor Sagan's command ship. Roberts leaned forward, his muscles taut with exhaustion and adrenaline. Track that ship, all power to engines and weapons. The battered human vessel surged forward, diving into the debris field surrounding the Iridian homeworld. Twisted metal and shattered hulls drifted past, silent monuments to the devastating battle. Evasive maneuvers! Roberts barked as Sagan's ship unleashed a barrage of energy torpedoes. The bridge crew worked in perfect synchronization, their countless hours of drills paying off as they threaded through the deadly obstacle course. Roberts gripped his chair as the ship banked hard, narrowly avoiding a chunk of debris the size of a small moon. Status on Sagan's ship? They're pushing their engines to the limit, sir, Chen replied, but we're gaining on them. The chase continued for hours, a deadly dance through the graveyard of war. Roberts' mind raced, analyzing every move, every potential advantage. Finally, an opportunity presented itself. There, he shouted pointing to a dense cluster of debris. Herd them towards that field. Prepare to fire on my mark. As Sagan's ship veered towards the trap, Roberts waited for the perfect moment. Fire! A precise volley of energy beams lanced out, striking Sagan's engines. The Iridian vessel lurched, trailing plasma as it lost power. Roberts stood, his voice firm. Prepare a boarding party. We're ending this. Minutes later... Roberts led a team onto Sagan's crippled ship. They moved swiftly through empty corridors, the emergency lighting casting eerie shadows. They found Sagan on the bridge, surrounded by his remaining officers. The Iridian leader's eyes blazed with defiance as Roberts approached. So the human conqueror comes to gloat, Sagan spat. You're no better than us, Roberts, just another tyrant. Roberts met Sagan's gaze steadily. You're wrong and I can prove it. He activated a holographic projector, filling the air with images and testimonies. The horrific extent of Iridian atrocities played out before them. Countless beings subjected to mind control, entire species enslaved or eradicated. This is the legacy of Iridian supremacy, Robert said quietly. This is what you've been fighting for. Sagan's face contorted as he watched, his certainty crumbling, 
The weight of truth settled on his shoulders, and Robert saw the moment the Iridian leader broke. So I, I didn't know, Sagan whispered, his voice hoarse. How could we have fallen so far? Sagan slumped in defeat. Very well, I surrender unconditionally. As Roberts led Sagan away in restraints, he knew this was only the beginning. The real work of building a lasting peace lay ahead, and the scars of this war would not heal easily. The echoes of war still reverberated through the galaxy, but Captain Michael Roberts found no respite. In the command center of the Alliance headquarters, he pored over intelligence reports, his face illuminated by the glow of holographic displays. Another attack on the Centauri colony, he muttered, swiping through images of devastation. These Iridian extremists won't let up. Azeslar, his scaled form hunched over an adjacent console, looked up. They cling to the old ways, Michael. Peace was never an option for them. Roberts nodded grimly. He'd known this fight was not nearly finished, but the scale of the extremists' guerrilla campaign shocked even him. He turned to address the assembled team of human and Iridian soldiers. We've identified a priority target, Roberts said, pulling up a holographic map of a desolate, rust-colored world. Intel suggests this planet houses a major Iridian stronghold. We hit it hard. We hit it fast. The next days were a blur of preparation. Roberts handpicked his strike force, a mix of battle-hardened humans and Zalar's most trusted rebels. They drilled relentlessly, honing their skills for the assault to come. As their ship dropped out of FTL above the target world, Roberts felt the familiar tightness in his chest. He checked his gear one last time, the weight of his rifle a cold comfort. Roberts looked at his team. Remember your training, watch each other's backs, let's end this. The moment their dropship touched down, all hell broke loose. Plasma fire lit up the night sky, forcing Roberts and his team to scramble for cover. They returned fire, the sound of their weapons thunderous in the thin atmosphere. Jenkins, get that heavy repeater up, Roberts shouted, ducking as a bolt of energy sizzled past his head. Zalar, take your squad and flank left. The battle raged for hours. Roberts lost track of time, his world narrowing to the next target, the next piece of cover. Slowly, brutally, they pushed forward. As they breached the base's perimeter, Roberts caught sight of a massive hangar. That's our target. Move. Inside they found row upon row of containers, each bearing ominous biohazard warnings. Roberts approached one, his breath catching as he saw the contents. Dear God, he whispered. The vials inside pulsed with an unearthly glow, each one capable of wiping out entire species. Sir, a soldier called out, we've got data on the scientists responsible. They're holed up on some lawless asteroid. Robert's face hardened. These monsters had to be stopped regardless of the cost. Prep for immediate dust-off. We're not done yet. The asteroid loomed before them, a pockmarked rock teeming with the galaxy's worst. Roberts led his team through twisting corridors and crowded bazaars, always alert for trouble. They found it soon enough. As they approached the scientists' hideout, a hail of gunfire forced them into cover. Roberts returned fire, downing two separatists with precise shots. Push forward, he yelled, vaulting over a barricade. The fighting was brutal, close quarters. Roberts saw good soldiers fall, their lives snuffed out in seconds. Finally, they cornered the Iridian scientists. Robert stared into their alien eyes, seeing fear and defiance in equal measure. He secured their restraints himself, making sure the bioweapon data was intact. As they prepared to leave, a new threat emerged. A fresh wave of Iridian extremists poured into the area, led by a towering figure Roberts recognized from intelligence briefings. Vraknar, he spat, diving for cover as energy bolts tore through the air. The Iridian commander's voice boomed across the battlefield. You cannot stop us, human. Our cause will triumph. Roberts rallied his remaining troops, their backs quite literally against a wall. Hold the line, he shouted, picking off extremists with well-placed shots. The fighting was intense, each side giving no quarter. Roberts watched in horror as more of his soldiers fell, their screams of pain searing into his memory. 
In a moment of desperation, Robert saw his chance. He charged Vraknar, tackling the massive Iridian to the ground. They grappled fiercely, trading vicious blows. With a final, brutal effort, Robert subdued Vraknar. As he snapped restraints onto the Iridian's wrists, he looked around at the carnage. The victory felt hollow. Back at Alliance headquarters, Robert stood before a sea of grateful faces. He accepted their praise with a nod, but inside he felt only the weight of lives lost. Later, alone in his quarters, Robert sifted through captured data. His blood ran cold as he uncovered evidence of a deeper conspiracy, shadowy figures prolonging the conflict for their own gain. He stared out at the stars, his mind racing. The peace they'd fought so hard for was still in jeopardy. But as he considered his next move, Roberts found himself questioning everything. Was there another way, or had he already gone too far? Roberts' eyes burned from lack of sleep as he sifted through the mountain of data before him. His fingers flew across the holographic interface, connecting threads of information. Suddenly he froze. There it was, the smoking gun. Zalar, look at this, he called to his Iridian ally. Zalar leaned in, his multifaceted eyes widening. By the first egg as it can't be. But it was. Financial records, intercepted communications, weapons shipments, all pointing to one inescapable conclusion. The Trell ambassador, Loran, had been secretly backing Vraknar's extremists. These are lies, Loran finally exploded, rising to his feet. Human fabrications to discredit the Trell. The chamber erupted into chaos. Councillor Tizin, a long-time ally of humanity, shouted for Loran's immediate arrest. Others demanded further investigation. As the debate raged, alarms suddenly blared throughout the station. Roberts's comm crackled to life. Sir, we're under attack! Explosions rocked the chamber. Smoke billowed as figures in Iridian battle armor poured through the breached walls. Roberts dove for cover, pulling his sidearm. Protect the council! he shouted, returning fire. The air filled with plasma bolts and screams. Roberts caught glimpses of trail infiltrators moving among the Iridian attackers, targeting specific counselors. He spotted Loran slipping away in the chaos. Zalar, with me! They fought their way through the corridors, pursuing the fleeing ambassador. Roberts' lungs burned as they raced after their quarry. They cornered Loran in a dead-end hallway, the trail turned, his eyes glowing with an unnatural light. You have no idea what you're dealing with, human, Loran sneered. What happened next defied belief. Loran moved with impossible speed, closing the distance before Roberts could react. A blow sent him flying across the room. Loran's lips curled into a cold smile. The future. While you've been playing at Unity, the trail have been evolving. This war is our path to galactic dominance— Roberts lunged, grappling with the enhanced trell. Every movement was agony as Loran's superhuman strength threatened to overwhelm him. With a desperate surge of effort, Roberts managed to slam Loran against the wall. He pressed his pistol to the trell's head. It's over, he panted. As Roberts led the restrained Loran away, the full weight of the situation hit him. The fragile alliance lay in tatters. Trust between species, already strained, now seemed irreparably broken. He found Zalar tending to wounded counsellors. Their eyes met, a silent understanding passing between them. This wasn't over. Not by a long shot. We need to move fast, Robert said, his voice hoarse. Round up everyone we can trust. We've got work to do. Robert's calm unit crackled to life. Sir, we're in position. He surveyed the sprawling Torvian shipyards through his tactical visor. Massive skeletal frames of unfinished warships loomed against the starry backdrop. This was it, the moment that would decide the fate of the Alliance. Stealth shuttles decloaked, disgorging squads of human and Iridian troops. They moved with practiced precision, neutralizing security checkpoints with stun weapons. Roberts led the charge towards the central control hub, his rifle at the ready. Alarms blared as they breached the facility's perimeter. A squad of Torvian guards rounded the corner, raising their weapons. 
The Torvians hesitated, confusion evident in their compound eyes. Robert seized the moment, closing the distance and disarming the lead guard with a swift strike. Listen to me, he said, locking eyes with the disarmed Torvian. The Alliance is compromised. We need to secure these shipyards before they fall into enemy hands. After ten seconds, the Torvian captain lowered his weapon. We, we surrender. Roberts nodded, relief washing over him. Secure the command center. I want production lines operational within the hour. As his troops fanned out through the complex, Robert's comm chirped again. Zalar's gravelly voice came through. Drax in foundry secured. No casualties. Excellent work, Roberts replied. How soon can we begin weapons production? Immediately, Zalar answered. But, Michael, there's unrest spreading through the Alliance. Not everyone approves of our actions. Roberts's lips pursed. We knew this wouldn't be clean. Have your people monitor the feeds. We need to stay ahead of... An explosion rocked the shipyards, cutting him off. Through the viewports, Roberts saw a trail cruiser emerging from hyperspace, weapons blazing. As Roberts manned the controls, he saw more ships dropping out of hyperspace, some moving to engage the trail, others turning their guns on the shipyards. The fragile alliance was shattering before his eyes. Amidst the chaos, a priority transmission came through. It was Major Emily Sanders, her face tight with urgency. Sir, we've infiltrated the Trell homeworld, she reported, her voice barely audible over the sounds of battle. You're not going to believe what we've found. Roberts listened, his blood running cold as Sanders detailed the horrors of the Trell's genetic engineering program. Monstrous warriors, bred for conquest and subjugation. He turned to his second-in-command. Rally every ship we can trust. We're going to make a stand here. As Roberts barked orders and coordinated the defense, his mind raced. The shipyards had to hold. Without them, they stood no chance against the Trell threat. But even if they succeeded, a harder choice loomed. Risk everything on a preemptive strike, or hunker down and prepare for the storm to come. The battle raged on, the fate of galaxies hanging in the balance. The holographic display flickered as Roberts and Zalar pored over the intelligence data. Major Sanders' face, etched with worry, hovered above the war room table. The Trell bioengineering program is more advanced than we feared, Sanders reported, her voice tight. If we don't act fast, we're looking at an army of unstoppable super-soldiers. Robert's fingers drummed on the table as he weighed their options. Fortifying our positions buys us time, but it's a losing strategy. We need to hit them hard and fast. With the decision made, Robert sprang into action. Within hours, a massive fleet of human and Iridian warships jumped into hyperspace, their destination, the Trell homeworld. As they dropped out of hyperspace, the fleet was met with a wall of Trell warships. Swarms of hunter-killer drones buzzed between the larger vessels, their weapons primed. Robert stood on the bridge of the flagship, his fists tight. Bring the prisoner, he ordered. Ambassador Loran was dragged onto the bridge, his iridescent robes now tattered and stained. Roberts grabbed him by the collar. You're going to get us through that blockade, or you'll die with the rest of us. Loran's eyes widened in fear as he was shoved towards the communications array. With trembling hands, he input the Trell defense codes, praying his people would see through the ruse. To everyone's amazement, the Trell defenses parted like a curtain. Roberts wasted no time. All ships commence bombardment of designated targets. The space above the Trell homeworld erupted in a firestorm as the Allied fleet unleashed its fury. Orbital defense platforms crumbled under the onslaught, and plumes of fire rose from the planet's surface where key military installations once stood. But the Trell weren't beaten yet. As Roberts led a ground assault team towards the primary bioengineering complex, they encountered resistance unlike anything they'd faced before. Fall back! Roberts shouted as one of the creatures tore through their front line. He unloaded his rifle into the beast's face, finally dropping it. They fought their way through the complex, room by room, level by level. The horrors they uncovered defied belief. In one chamber, 
they found tanks filled with grotesque fusions of different alien species, living weapons created through forced hybridization. Robert stared at the abominations, his stomach churning. He keyed his comm. This ends now. Initiate Operation Hellfire. From orbit, Allied ships unleashed a barrage of tactical nukes and orbital strikes. The bioengineering complex vanished in a blinding flash, taking with it countless Allied soldiers still fighting inside. As the dust settled, Roberts received word from Zalar. The Iridian commander had led a brilliant counterattack against the Trell fleet, exploiting a weakness in their defensive algorithms. The space above the Trell homeworld now belonged to the Alliance. With their military might shattered and their secret weapon program in ruins, the Trell leadership had no choice. A message of unconditional surrender flashed across every screen in the Allied fleet. Robert stood in the ruins of the Trell capital, overseeing the arrest of their ruling council. The victory felt hollow as he thought of the soldiers he'd lost, including Major Sanders. As the council chamber erupted in heated debate over the future of galactic security, Roberts exchanged a weary glance with Zalar. They'd won the war, but the real challenge, building a lasting peace, was just beginning. The battle-scarred hull of the UES Intrepid groaned as it docked at Earth's orbital station. Michael Roberts stood alone on the bridge, his face etched with exhaustion. The viewport showed the blue-green sphere of his homeworld, a sight that should have filled him with joy. Instead, he felt nothing but a gnawing emptiness. As the airlock hissed open, Robert steeled himself for what lay ahead. He stepped onto the station's deck, the cheers of the waiting crowd washing over him like a physical force. Flags waved, cameras flashed, and a sea of faces beamed up at him with adoration. The shouts blended into a cacophony that threatened to overwhelm him. Roberts forced a smile, shaking hands and nodding as he made his way through the throng. His eyes darted from face to face, searching for one he knew he'd never see again. A cluster of dignitaries waited at the end of the receiving line. The Secretary-General of the United Earth Government stepped forward, a gleaming medal in his hands. General Roberts, he intoned, his voice amplified for the crowd. For your unparalleled heroism in the face of the Trell threat, I present you with the Star of Terror, our highest honor. Roberts bowed his head, allowing the medal to be draped around his neck. The weight of it felt like a noose. Thank you, sir, he managed, but the real heroes are the ones who didn't make it back. The next hours passed in a blur of speeches, handshakes and forced smiles. Roberts answered questions on autopilot, his mind a thousand light years away. When he finally escaped to his assigned quarters, he collapsed onto the bed, still in full dress uniform. Sleep eluded him. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw the faces of those he'd lost. Sanders cut down by trail fire. Zhang vaporized when her ship exploded. Thousands more, their names etched in his memory. Dawn found Robert standing before the newly erected memorial wall. The black stone stretched for what seemed like miles, covered in the names of the fallen. He ran his fingers over the cold surface, stopping at a familiar etching. Tamaji Emily Sanders, D2187, 2215, for Earth and all her children. I'm sorry, he whispered. I'm so sorry. Days later, Roberts found himself on a transport bound for his family's ranch in Montana. As the craft touched down, he breathed in the crisp mountain air. The familiar scent of pine and earth filled his lungs, a stark contrast to the recycled atmosphere of starships. He trudged up the path to the old log cabin, each step feeling heavier than the last. As he reached for the door, a familiar voice froze him in his tracks. Roberts spun around, hand instinctively reaching for a weapon that wasn't there. Zalar stood at the edge of the clearing, his chitinous form a stark contrast to the pastoral surroundings. How did you find me? Roberts demanded, muscles tensed for a fight. Zalar raised his hands in a gesture of peace. I come as a friend, Michael. We have much to discuss. Robert studied his former ally, searching for any sign of deception. Finding none, he nodded tersely and pushed open the cabin door. Come in, he said, but I'm watching you. 
Inside, Roberts poured himself a generous measure of whiskey. He didn't offer any to Zalar, unsure if Iridians could even stomach human alcohol. Zalar's multifaceted eyes seemed to shimmer with emotion. I... I find myself unable to celebrate our victory. The cost was too high. Roberts laughed bitterly. You're preaching to the choir. Every time I close my eyes I see their faces. The ones we lost. As do I, Zalar admitted. The methods we employed, they weigh heavily on my conscience. Zalar produced a data chip, his clawed hands trembling slightly. The initial Iridian attacks on human colonies, they were not what we thought. Robert's blood ran cold as Zalar laid out the evidence. Intercepted communications, financial transactions, all pointing to a horrifying conclusion. A rogue faction within Earth's own government had orchestrated the entire conflict, manipulating both sides for their own gain. But deep down he knew it was. The pieces fell into place, revealing a picture too terrible to contemplate. Robert surged to his feet, hurling his glass against the wall. It shattered, sending shards of glass and droplets of amber liquid flying. I'll kill them, he snarled, his voice barely recognizable. Every last one of those traitorous bastards. Roberts's chest heaved as he fought to control his rage. Zalar's words cut through the haze of anger, forcing him to confront the truth. Zalar's eyes met his, filled with a mixture of sorrow and hope. We have a choice to make, my friend, one that will shape the future of both our peoples. Robert stood at the precipice, teetering between vengeance and reconciliation. The weight of his decision pressed down on him, threatening to crush what was left of his spirit. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.